Hello, hello, welcome to ArcPoint. My name is Marcus, and today we're going to be taking a quick look into the core editor. And what better way than by actually doing something with a purpose? So, we're going to be making weapon art for our gun. So, first things first, this is the scene view. It allows you to view what's in the game in the 3D space. You can hold down right mouse to look around WASD while holding that mouse to move the camera. And this on the right is the hierarchy. It shows all the objects currently in the game space. So it's just as the floor, which when selected shows properties. These are the details when you either select it in the hierarchy or selecting in the scene view. This is the project content tab in the left. Uh, we'll get back to that. This is the core content tab which shows all the core provided assets we're going to be making our art out of. And this is community content, which is essentially a community catalog of free assets created by people made out of the core content because we can't import. So we have to make it out of these objects. So first things first, we're going to drag in a cube. So core content, 3D objects, basic shapes, a cube. We drop and drag that into the scene and we're given three tools. The move tool, which is the short, uh, shortcut for W, E and R. So e, W is the move tool, E is the rotation, and R is the scaling. So we're going to just drag it up a bit and we're going to take a look at a couple more options in the top left bar. Most notably, snap to grid. So this currently snaps to a grid. And if we turn that off by pressing G, it now moves smoothly, but less accurately. Uh, we can press Control Z to undo that. And we can also take a look at world space. So currently it's moving in the world space. And if we rotate that and turn it into local space, it's going to move depending on the rotation of the cube. Now when doing this, I suggest having grid snap off because if it snaps to the grid, it's going to be a little bit, a little less smooth, it's going to be more janky. Yeah, I'm just going to undo that. So we're going to create weapon art, but how big is the character? We don't actually know. So we're going to find something under core content, which would be under utility. So core comes with a couple of guides, such as a color palette checker, a measurement tool, and what we're looking for is a two-hand weapon guide. So this shows how the player is going to hold the weapon because there is a series of animations and stances that Core comes with. So we're going to have to make it specific to this. So I've already previously mentioned that in Core you can't import assets. You have to kitbash out of Core provided assets. So we're going to do that a bit now. We're going to find not a cube this time. We're going to find some pre-made props, weapons, modern parts. There we go. Ah, and we're also going to turn back on snapping to the grid. So we find a catalog of useful items here. And we're going to find ourselves a grip. Can bring it up. We're going to align it nicely, uh, close enough. Perfect. Awesome. Now, instead of dragging and dropping, I'm actually going to just duplicate using Control W and swap out the mesh. It just means I don't have to reposition everything. 
but it does mean I have to search for whatever I want to swap the mesh to. Uh, usually there's a couple of good keywords such as weapon and I'm going to find a body piece. Yes. I'm going to create a weapon out of that. I'm going to find a barrel. Easy. Close enough to a gun. Yeah. Sweet. So now we have some weapon art. But you'll notice one thing is that the objects, they move independently of each other. We don't want that. So in this hierarchy, we're going to create something called a group. So this is um, it's essentially a folder in core that allows you to neatly put in objects. Uh, groups come with transforms as well. So we're able to rotate. Whoa. Hmm. That's a bit weird. Ah. So we're going to create the group under this. We're going to drag it out. We're going to move this group to the center. And now, now we're going to put everything underneath. So now it should pivot correctly. There we go. So instead of moving just one of the objects, it's moving all of the objects. So we don't have to singly, individually, select each and every single object. Now, one thing to note is that you can hold down control to select multiple objects and the pivot will be at the last selected object. So if you want to pivot from, say, the front, you can select and unselect. Now we can rename it here. Totally a uh, weapon. And now we technically have some art. Oh, hang on. This isn't good. We want to change out the material. So another thing that Core comes with is materials that allow you to customize the look a bit more, such as a leafy gun. You can either drop and drag it directly onto the object, or you can go to the properties tab and find it underneath base material. Yes. Uh, you can also further customize these materials by pressing new custom material, which you can find under project content. These allow you to further customize the materials such as blue leaves, and other fancy options. Different materials will have different options. Yeah. And there's usually more than one spot for these pre-made objects to place a material. Yeah. Okay, next thing is to create a template. So, Essentially, this allows you to save a copy of the object. And that is pressing this button, create new templates. So we're going to name it totally a weapon, new template. And then we're going to find it under the my templates folder in project content. So now we can drop and drag this object. Easy. It's the same copy. Now the wonderful thing about templates is that I can go here, I can change something on this template, say white emissives, and then I can press update template from this, and then it's going to change it on both. But what happens if I don't want them both to have white lights? Then I can press D instance. It essentially isolates this template so that I can make a change to it, such as P 
pink lights. Ah, it's purple, whatever. And it doesn't change it on this template. We can always uh, update to the template, abandon it entirely, or we can reset this to the white light of the template. That is one of the interesting and good things, of course, the template system. It also allows you to export it as a PBT file and bring it into other projects. Yeah, so hopefully that has been a helpful, basic, quick look into the core editor in regards to creating art. Uh, next, we're going to give this weapon a bit more functionality. Maybe make it look a bit better. We'll see. Okay, and while editing the video and deciding I didn't really like this gun at all, I thought instead of having a super speedy montage, uh, I'll just edit it, talk a bit, and yeah, we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> so just gonna delete the second weapon. Going to, yeah, we're gonna delete this as well. We're going to start from scratch, find 3D object, props, weapons, modern. We're gonna find ourselves a nice handle. Let's go with this. And yeah, we're going to make a, I think an assault rifle would work out nicely. And so yeah, I'm going to start with the base of the handle. Going to find some body parts to just flesh it out a bit, I guess. Yeah. Oh, one thing is that we can press this little arrow. Uh, pretty much looks like an undo button that reverts it to the default, which is usually zero. But if it's in a template, it will revert to the templates defaults. So for instance, if I save this as a template with the 0 0.21 scale, whenever I re revert to default, it's going to be 0 0.721. Good stuff. Okay, the rest of what I'll be saying isn't regarding to what I'm currently doing in the video, but a couple of things I thought I should mention. So uh, I know it's been said already, but uh, Control S is saving. You should really get uh, used to that. Um, Core does autosave, but honestly, I trust uh, manually saving with Control S over the autosave. Sometimes it can be a bit finicky loading that autosave instead of loading the last manual save. So yeah, it's just a if in doubt, control S. Another thing is with objects, the size being 1x, 1y, 1z, uh, that's the default size of the object. So for instance, if I change it to 2x, 2y, 2z, that doubles the size of the object in all of its aspects. So what that means is that, for instance, if you have two gun pieces and they're both 2x, they're not going to be the same length. They're going to be just double the length of the original object size. So just saying again, that is not an object of measure. That is simply uh, changing the size in respect to the original size of the object. Another thing to mention is that you do not have to share your template on community content to transfer it to another project. I've seen a lot of people do this. They publish a template to community content just to transfer it over to a, another project. You can actually go to project content, right click on your template and press export 
and you can find that in the Project Explorer. Um, actually, when you export it, it just pops up the File Explorer and shows you where that template is. You can go into your new project, and if you've created a template before, you can find the template folder under that new project and just drag and drop that into the new project. And that will come uh, with all the materials, scripts, if there's any underneath them, uh, etc. Everything you need when you export the template is part of that. I will also mention the difference between a group and a folder in the hierarchy. So a group is preferred. Um, it's essentially a folder in core. But if you create a folder, uh, that will actually create a folder in the project, like a file explorer folder. And if you have too many of those, that will slow your project down. So generally, I suggest making a group. The only time I would personally use folders is uh, group collaboration over GitHub. Another thing is smart materials. So underneath materials in the properties tab, you may have noticed a checkbox called smart materials. Um, what this does is applies the texture, not according to the object, but according to the position in the world. So that if you have two intersecting cubes, that it pretty much looks seamless. A, yep, it is especially good for environmental, um, such as walls, floors, buildings, essentially. Uh, it doesn't look too good on moving objects, but uh, you can always give that a try. Uh, lastly, we've got overclocking colors. So when editing a material or a color, you can click on color and input manual numbers into it. Uh, generally this applies for a lot of the times when you can input a number into core that you can overclock the number larger than what the slider will allow you. So for instance a slider goes from 0 to 10 you can actually manually input a number like 9999 it uh, sometimes can produce interesting results. So yeah, I hope this video helped you out. Uh, in the next video, we will be providing some actual functionality to this weapon. I shall see you then.